Okay, so I'm um, sticking a bit to the format that was um, that Michelle sent around. Um, so my current position is I'm a professor in, in bioinformatics at the University of Cape Town, South Africa. Um, I had the computational biology division there. Um, but for my sins, the, the, the greatest um, amount of work I do is, is a PI of a pan-African bioinformatics network of 34 institutions in 16 countries. So that keeps me pretty busy. Um, so I'm going to go through uh, the career path that I, I took and, and then go through which, which parts of those were choice and which parts of those were complete serendipity. So all I can say is only the middle bits were planned. So I uh, actually, throughout my entire life, was going to be an artist. I love art. It has bugger all to do with science. Um, and I was going to do graphic art. It was only in my, uh, literally the last two months of, of my high school, you have to go see your career guidance person. And the woman said, well, look, look with your marks, you can get into any degree you want at university. So she said, oh, well, tell me what, what's out there. So she went through the BSc degree. I thought, oh, that looks really cool. Let me do that. So I applied and I got in. And I loved it. And then also, like when I was interested in evolution, so I actually signed up for um, anatomical science, which is more about archaeology. And then really got into um, microbial science. So I was one of about six people in the whole of our school year that didn't do biology and ended up majoring and doing a PhD in microbiology. So that was a bit of um, a surprise. So I did um, microbiology and chemistry, and then I did a microbiology honors. And then I went on to do a PhD in, in medical micro, and, and again, this was a bit of um, a pot like. I, I went for an interview at one of the universities and got into a, um, it was a big TB program that Glaxo was, was um, sponsoring at the time. So I thought, actually, I don't like Stellenbosch University. I'd like to go back to UCT. So I just walked in to the PR and I said, oh, you're on this grant too. Do you have any PhD studentships available? So we had an ad hoc interview and started a month later. So out of all of that, all the red bits was complete serendipity. Some of it was planned, and then the orange part was sort of half planned, half um, potluck. And then during my PhD, I ended up, um, <coughs> this is showing my age now, but in, in those days, the TB genome hadn't been sequenced. I mean, there were hardly any genome sequences uh, out there. So that was only sequenced halfway through my PhD. So I had to do a lot of bioinformatics, and again, showing my age, we did uh, um, blast searches on you had to stick in all the little hard drives, the little uh, puppies to get your data on it. The Swiss plot was on a multiple um, different disks. Um, some people are nodding, so they've been there before. And the, the rest was self-taught because we had no bioinformatics then at that time. And then Wynn came and gave a talk, actually, and he said, oh, I'm starting bioinformatics. So um, I got into bioinformatics, and then I really wanted to do that. I traveled for a year and then came back and went to Wynn and said, so, you know, how about it? You know, I want to maybe think about a postdoc. But I actually had a, I had a work permit for the UK, so I thought, let me go there. So I applied to the EBI, um, thinking, oh, well, it's, 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 uh, it's not going to happen because it's a European thing. And uh, being South African didn't, didn't matter, so I got in. And um, again, the, the first part was a, a bit of serendipity getting into the bioinformatics field simply because of need. So a lot of these things were driven by need. I needed something, I needed a technique, so I learned it and I taught myself. Um, and then the rest was planned. So I went to, to EBI, I actually worked as a switchboard curator for probably about two months and, and there were two of us that started at the same time and we were probably so bad that they, um, uh, they, they needed a new project, Interpro, was about was just starting up. It was in the um, development stages. And maybe we were so bad at annotation of, of Swishbot that they decided to hand us over to the Interpro <laughs> team. And we got really involved in Interpro and, and then they eventually evolved to lead the project. So I was team leader of Interpro for, um, in the end, I was at EBI for eight and a half years. So again, there was just pure luck. The project happened to come along Rolf needed some people to work on it, got involved in that, and ended up actually running the project in the end. So some of that is a bit of, um, I guess, p some of this, the skills, that your natural skills that come out. So there were two of us. I had, Maybe I had better leadership skills, and so sort of naturally just progressed to that position. Maybe it was, again, um, potluck. So then I, uh, also another thing that I started was uh, the end, um, Interpro, we wanted to, I wanted to do classified genomes. I was interested in research on microbial genomes. So I'd started my own functional classification scheme. This was before Go came about. And then um, Rolf had mentioned that to various people who were doing the human genome paper, the nature paper. And they didn't have a way at the time to, cl to functionally classify the, the protein sequences because Go wasn't out there. 
And so I did the classification for that using the scheme, which then eventually became evolved to go. And then I did the interpret to go mappings, which are, are still ongoing. So, so that was really interesting because then I got obviously on the Nature Paper, which has received, I don't know, 26,000 citations, that Nature Paper by now. I mean, you're one of the list of about 20,000 authors too, but still, <laughs> it counts. And then, um, <coughs> so in general, like being at EBI, I, I try to make the most of the time there. So if there was a seminar by anyone or anyone, anyone or everyone, I went to that seminar and, and you know, really got exposed to a wide variety of fields. I was in the big sequence database group, and so you get exposed to how services are, are developed and run, as well as sort of research um, at the time. So again, some planned, some serendipity, some a bit of both. Um, <coughs> and then I'd also actually, while I was there, I'd, I'd HGMP at the time was still open, and they were running courses. So I just taught myself a, 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 a wide variety of different bioinformatics techniques. So meanwhile, back at home, I really wanted to come home. Um, Cambridge is not quite as exciting as Cape Town in terms of lifestyle. And things were hotting up there with, with um, funding for bioinformatics. And so I actually went and worked with Wynn for a year. Um, <laughs> thanks. And then I decided that Wynn, I was away, far too close to Wynn. I had to move 15 kilometers away to the other university. And then when he moved to Harvard, we got on even better because he was then thousands of... <laughs> but I have to say that um, this connection with, with Wynn was, um, again, it's a, it's a friendship that we've had for a long time. But he actually got me involved in um, a binet, which is basically a, um, a project. It was a, a big meeting, WHO meeting we had in, in Nigeria, which eventually led to now a $13 million NIH project for this Pan-African Bioinformatics Network. So again, it was, it was a chance meeting. I actually had another meeting I was supposed to go to in the UK, and I thought, actually, no, this meeting in Nigeria is more important. I had to cancel um, at the last minute the UK one and went to the Nigerian one. And it's led to this, and now you know that's that's most of my time spent is on this project, um, and so again, in this case, a, a little bit more was planned, um, and then basically I've moved on to, to to head the group at UCT now, but I think it's also been t been to the take your opportunities where you see them, um, and don't be shy to do that, and don't be shy to build networks. I think that's the most important. So then we also asked to talk about how to learn other non-science stuff. So how to teach, how to manage a group, um, teaching, basically just take on board the evaluations you get from the students. The first time you're going to do it, you're going to get crap evaluations probably. Um, but then you take this on board, you improve. And like Wynn says, get a good mentor. Um, I did whatever courses I could. I tried to ex expand my skills in whatever area I could. But the, I think the bottom line is some academics are good managers, some are good um, thinkers and they're not necessarily they don't necessarily go together and um, you need to think what is your strength are you a manager are you a leader or are you just one of these blue skies you can think of fantastic ideas and and you know then hire a project manager hire a good person to to be with you so surround yourself with good people build on the strengths that you have um, and exploit them and then you can work on the weaker areas through training so some training courses some basic courses will do will do some things for you but really it's a lot of my stuff was, was learning on the job, trial and error, some things work, some things don't, but take every opportunity you can. So think about, like in this case with an idea, what is an opportunity that's likely to get you somewhere that's different or where, where you want to be? Um, so if, I'd, if somebody had asked me in high school where I would be now, I'd be designing graphics somewhere. <laughs> so I would never have thought I'd be on this, but the greatest thing about this is it's the best job. Being an, an academic scientist is actually probably one of the best jobs in the world. You get to do what you love every day. You get to travel. You get to meet people. You get the flexibility to do what you want. Um, so, yeah, I would highly recommend it. And um, I guess the take home here would be get a good mentor. Look at just what strengths you have and exploit them. Um, and the, actually what I haven't what I mentioned any briefly is, is networks. So my time at EBI was the best thing I could have done. If I'd stayed in South Africa, gone to Sanbi, you know, maybe it would, be, would have been good for, for Sanbi and my career there, but I would never have had the networks that I've built um, internationally. And I've made an effort, so for actually for four years of my EBI time, I commuted between Cape Town and, and, and EBI. I had the longest commute at EBI, but it was worth it because I maintained that tar those ties. I, I continued to work in international projects, and that, I think, was, was key to, to um, a reasonable career.